Hey, Tim DeStasio here. It's Psychrometric Saturday once again. We've been talking about duct condensation. We talked about what happens in a crawl space and why ducts really tend to sweat in a crawl space and what we can do about that. Now, we are in an attic and that attic is a lot warmer than that crawl space. Let's say that attic is 90 degree dry bulb. Now, obviously, we know that attics can get a lot hotter than that, but this may be a nighttime temperature of an attic. And because we're a lot warmer in that attic, that warm air can hold a lot more moisture even when it warms up. So our dew points in attics can be at 80 degrees or even higher. So we've plotted that here. We've got 90 degree dry bulb and 80 degree dew points. So we're way up here in the chart. We've got a lot of humidity in the air. Now that HVAC unit in that attic is putting out 55 degree air as it should, but it's only wrapped with R4, maybe it's an older duct system, then the studies that they've done show that a 55 degree duct wrapped with R4 in a 90 degree environment, the surface temperature, the outer temperature of that duct would be 80 degrees. So our 80 degree outer temperature is the same exact temperature as the dew point. So we're really close to that dew point. Chances are we are going to have sweaty ducts because they are R4. Now what happens when we raise that R value to R6? Six. Okay, we have raised our R value to R6. That means that this 55 degree air is not cooling down the outer temperature of our duct as much. Studies have shown that when you've got a 55 degree duct with R6 duct wrap in a 90 degree environment, then your outer temperature right here is going to be around 82.5 degrees. Now that's two and a half degrees above what our dew point is. So we might be okay as long as there's some air moving. But again, if we've got stagnant air, we could actually still be sweating in those cases. Okay, we've changed our R value on our duct wrap to R8. So studies have shown that when we've got a 55 degree duct wrapped with R8 in a 90 degree environment, then that outer temperature of that duct is going to be around 84 degrees, which is four degrees above our dew point. So we don't have much of a chance of it sweating unless that air around that duct was really, really stagnant. So what does that tell us? Well, we need to maintain, if we're going to have ducts in a hot, humid attic, we need to make sure that that attic is actually hot. It needs to be above 90 degrees or else those ducts in a month like July and August, when it's really, really humid, those ducts could sweat. Well, if this temperature in this attic comes down and the humidity stays up, then we could have a problem with duct sweating. You could have a radiant barrier that somebody put up trying to lower that duct temperature. Maybe they're trying to lower their energy bills. And in fact, all they were doing was lowering this temperature, but they were not doing anything about the dew point. And all of a sudden their ducts start sweating. Somebody could go and blow a bunch of insulation on top of ducts and all of a sudden they create a cool pocket right here where the temperature that surrounds this duct is a lot cooler than 90 degrees and you could start getting ducts that start sweating. You could be compressing insulation by the way that you've hung your ducts. Maybe you got them laying on the structure and that's not really R8 right there. You're compressing that R value. You could be getting duct condensation because of that. We're doing as much as we can to try to keep this temperature above this dew point. So hopefully that helps you as you start diagnosing duct condensation problems. That's all we're going to cover for today. Thanks for watching Psychometric Saturday.